Tonight we'll start off with prayer and pledge. I'll lead the prayer and the pledge. For those who would like to participate, please do so. Gracious Heavenly Father, we ask for love, peace, understanding, and the wisdom to know the difference tonight. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Madam Clerk, roll call, please. Councilmember Sylvia. Present. Councilmember Williams. Present. Councilmember Balls. Present. Mayor Pro Tem Bench. Present. Councilmember Bostash is excused. Councilmember Garcia. Present. Councilmember Flores. Present. Councilmember Copeland is excused. Mayor Moore. Present. We have seven member present and two absent. You have a quorum. Thank you. This is a public meeting of city council. The audience asked, is asked to refrain from booing, clapping, and any obnoxious behavior. A reminder, everyone, please silence your phones and your computers. Audience, if I can get you to do the same thing, I sure would appreciate it. Thank you very much, Madam Clerk. Thank you, Mayor. I just want to remind everyone that the agenda has been revised, and it's due to the removal of the ordinance introduction. That was an item regarding an amendment to the official city map. We will not be taking action on that tonight. Our next item is public input. The purpose of the public, the purpose, no, I'm sorry, speak clearly and remain courteous and respectful when you approach the podium. This follow the, the, the clerk will call you up to the podium. You have three minutes to get what you need to have said in three minutes. There's a clock that she will be timing you on. You should not be addressing anything to any Pacific Council person. When you get close to your three-minute mark, I'll say almost time. Wrap it up. Madam Clerk. Thank you. Our first speaker tonight is Rosalind McNichols. Good evening, council Good evening. members. Good evening. And, uh, can you pull your mic over in front of you, Ms. Robert? Thank you. Good evening, council, me council members and citizens Good evening. of Saginaw. I was going to speak on Jetway and um, the shooting, but I'm not because after careful thought between my call acts and the speak, I just see it's a bigger picture, and that's the youth of Saginaw, Michigan. And um, the older people are having some... Um, affairs and they're turning out really nice but as we all know there's nothing for the inner city youth of Saginaw and that's why they hang on the streets and they're been hanging on the streets so we're gonna have to come up with something for them and I um, am looking for board members for the Saginaw inner city club Academy which will be for a middle and high school students to come together form their own clubs um, make their own mission and vision statements and codes of conduct. We grown-ups will lead the club and um, this will do a lot away with uh, the uh, this side and that side because kids will be coming from all over the city to work together at their particular club, coding clubs, athletic clubs, arts and sciences clubs and I'm going to need help to launch this program because if we don't address this issue like the uh, First War Community Center, I feel, need to be updated and programs set there. We need to um, give more funding over to the neighborhood house, maybe build an annex for more programs for the youth, Not the youth, because that's where the problem lies. The drug dealers go after the youth when they're coming out of elementary school, so we got to have an answer. And this is year after year after year, and they're getting younger and younger and younger. And so I'm um, going to be putting together some paperwork and sending it out, and I hope that you can help me pick a board. I hope that you can get behind the Saginaw Inner City Club Academy, which will be geared towards uh, middle and high school students, because we have to institute something. 
we got to give our children in the inner city communities across Saginaw a chance. And so we got to have programs. When I was coming up, we didn't have enough time to participate in all the programs that we had. We had every community center open. We had Mommy Wicks. We had uh, after school programs where I learned how to knit, crochet, sew, home act, everything. We need to get back to the basics in Saginaw. Some of the basics. We need to go back. I know we can't go back because it's a computer age, and so we're going to have to deal with the kids as they come, whether we want to or not. They're there, and they're not going anywhere, and they're our children. You know, so that's it. Thank you. Thank, Thank, you. You. Thank you. Next, we have Colleen Brown. I don't see her. Let's go to Maximus Jabbar. Good evening. Thank you for letting Good me Good come evening. and say what I have to say real quick. I'm going to make this real quick. Cameras. You need cameras. We lost some people. People are dead. Mm -hmm. I've seen too much killing. In Vietnam and everywhere. I lived in L.A. for 34 years. I've never seen this. And I lived in with the Bloods and the Crips. They never did this. You got to come up with something. Because this is a good city. You got good people here. If it wasn't for my mother, I would have never came back here. I came back to take care of my mother. I came to summon to the Nomi. I came here to do something good for the community because I live in the community. I didn't leave. I could have. I still can. But I want to see, like this sister said, the kids need help. They need help bad. And we got to make a difference. And it's going to take you and it's going to take the community. Not just the police. I've been in, in Indian reservations. Sometimes to take Indians to deal with Indians. And that's what they do. Sometimes we're going to have to come up and be men and not cowards. We have to sit back and I fought for a country. We all have. My father, his father, my ancestors. We have to do something. We have to do something. And now. And may God be with everybody. But my heart is going on to the family. The young man that died, 18 years old, 19 years old. I seen him three months ago. Good kid. Saw him at, this, at, at, at uh, Tim Hortons. Just graduated. 19 years old, gone. Lady, gone. You expect this kind of stuff in Los Angeles, Chicago, and New York, but not in a little city like this. This is a good city. I like the city. But the city kind of running me away. I want to do something before I leave here. I'm going back to the mother home in another five years. I promised my mother. She told me she wanted me to stay. She said, I, said, I don't want to stay here. She said, God's got a purpose for you to be here. And it took last week to see this. So do something. May God bless everybody. Thank you for everything. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, the council board, for giving me this time. Peace and love. Thank, Thank you. Peace. Our next speaker is Lauren Collison. Thank you, City Council, men and women, for your service to Saginaw. I'm Lauren Collison. Um, I'm the director of the Saginaw Art Fair, um, as well as an advocate of great things that our city has to offer. My history working with the art fair in Saginaw started in 2017. After that, with working with the art fairs, um, <clears throat> with Old Town Art Fair from 2018 to 2022, we had a couple years break because of COVID, my experience working with art fairs goes back further in time when I was a student at Michigan State University. There I worked with the University Activities Board and helped run the MSU Arts and Crafts Show. I've also had experiences as an emerging artist at the East Lansing Arts and Crafts Show and as an exhibiting artist with a group of art teachers at the Ann Arbor Art Fair. I am also a teacher at Carleton High School. I am excited to share with you tonight the progress we are making with the upcoming um, Saginaw Art Fair on Ojibwe Island on Friday, August 11th from 11 a.m. to 7 p.m. and Saturday, August 12th, 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. I've given you a little handout that I, you have at your table. The Saginaw Art Fair is managed by a volunteer committee 
through the Saginaw Art Initiative, a 501c3 nonprofit organization. Our mission is to create an interdisciplinary art fair to celebrate all the fine arts and promote art education. We strive for a holistic art fair that includes a variety of visual performance and culinary arts while building community in the greater Saginaw area. Our vision is to create a sustaining fine arts festival that celebrates the beauty of Saginaw while promoting collaboration between local artists, businesses, and community organizations with the collective goal of supporting arts, culture, and art education. We provide a family-friendly atmosphere that includes free art classes, art activities, live demonstrations um, that expand art appreciation to inspire the artist in everyone. We have 53 exhibiting artists, which will feel, fill nearly 60 booth spaces. In addition, we have a maker space to provide free drop-in art activities and three free art classes. We have performances ranging from music, poetry, and dance, including a free dance uh, workout class from the Saginaw YMCA. We are excited about the positive energy the art fair will not only bring to greater Saginaw community, but for the city of Saginaw specifically. We are providing an event to our community that is controlled and free of cost to the public attending. My volunteer work with the Saginaw Art Fair is to bring what we hope is a lasting and successful event to our community like Saginaw Pride has been able to create. I believe lasting events can thrive with the support of the municipality they reside in. With this, we hope the city of Saginaw will consider partnering with the Saginaw Art Fair to help provide reduced rates for the use of the parks. I am asking for the council's consideration and support for this community event by considering the reduction of the fees and cost for the use of the island. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Our next speaker is Hurley Coleman. Good evening uh, to Good evening. our mayor, city manager, city council members, and all those who are in attendance tonight, those listening online, uh, bring you greetings from Saginaw County Community Action, where I serve as the CEO of the agency. And our agency has been changing uh, lives in this county for, since 1965. We're so excited about being able to do that. Uh, we're one of 27 community action agencies in the state of Michigan, one of 1,000 in America. I uh, just wanted to bring you some updates in terms of what's going on at the agency and what we're doing. Uh, we're thankful for um, the MISHTA, uh, Michigan State Housing uh, Development Authority. Uh, we received uh, the, a grant for, from the Phase Two My Hope program, uh, which they awarded us $150,000 to do uh, some home efficiency and uh, efficiency programs for homeowners. Uh, so we are excited to start that. Uh, they'll be coming to the agency on Thursday at 1130 for a, pre a check presentation. So city council members, are you invited? And uh, also, we would be happy to join us there at 1130 if you'd like um, to, to come there. Um, so the application portal was already open, um, but they're going to reopen it. Uh, again for other residents. I believe Saginaw County has already received applications, but we'll have access to those to those applications as soon as Mr. gives that us the sign. Uh, and as soon as we get the sign, we'll send a notice out to the community to let them know that the portal is open for them to apply. And they can only apply from the MISTA uh, website. So they will not be able to apply from the agency. They'll have to apply straight from MISTA website. Um, so we're thankful, again, uh, for the Community Development Block Grant. Uh, we received funds through the City of Saginaw for our Front Porch Project and also the Minor Home Repairs Program. We started taking applications for that on July 1st. And so the Front, front Porch Project was designed to uh, improve the front porch area of a home to create curb appeal, remove blight, and also create community. Um, interaction. So this uh, is now open to any city resident. We were just focusing on uh, Unity and Community Neighborhood Association, but now we've opened it up to the entire city. So we'd like for the, the residents to be a member of a neighborhood association, uh, and we'd love for them to get connected to the neighborhood associations. That's one of the criteria, and there's also an income uh, criterion as well. So as long as the residents fall within those aspects of uh, having a neighborhood association, and, um, and being involved in that neighborhood association, even if they join upon 
uh, getting the application. We want them to be connected to what their neighborhood association is and what they're doing. That's a part of the whole goal of, of, of bridging the gap for community. All right, I got 18 seconds. We have a golf outing that's going to be happening on September 2nd. Uh, so please, we love for you to have support. Uh, this is a second annual uh, CAC Classic. We love to have uh, businesses, community leaders, residents, family and friends to come. You can visit the website or call us for more information. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Our next speaker is Charlie Lawrence. Good evening, City Council. Thank you guys for allowing me to come. Um, my name is Chucky Lawrence. Um, I built something called the second, uh, well, the Peace and the Uni Unity uh, kickball game, and this is going to be our second year. Um, I came here today to specifically invite all people of all ethnicity, race, and side of town to this event. Uh, right now, I feel like our city is in desperate need of unity as well as peace in our community with all the things that we've seen happen here lately. Um, this is an invitation to, to bring back things that, that are uh, inclusive in our community. Um, these are, these are, all my events are geared toward um, safe and fun and love within the, within the community. Uh, last year, we had over 3,000 people come out to play kickball. Um, it was a, it, I went back and got all of the old schools because I'm, I'm a pretty old guy, as you, as you can see, and uh, kickball was fun for us. Um, and I use it as an example to our youth to show that we can come together from all sides of towns, from all races, all walks of life, and, and, it, and it, can, it can be fun. It can be something positive. Um, we did not have one incident last year. Um, I would love for city council and members of our law enforcement communities, our first responders, and, and everybody to feel like they're welcome to come out this year. Um, we've added a lot of great things this year. We think it's going to be great. We think it can be greater, but we need the support of everybody from, from our civic leaders um, to our law enforcement agencies to, to get on board with us and allow somebody like myself that has made, made bad choices in my past to be an example uh, to our youth. Man, our youth are going in a bad direction right now. And it's our responsibility to step up and do something about it. Um, this will be August 19th at Hoyt Park for anybody that's heard about it. Um, I'm, you can look me up on my Facebook page under Chucky Lawrence if you have any questions about it. But please feel free to reach out to me and please everybody share this to your page because this is going to be something that I'm going to keep stumping the grounds um, to keep for our community because I believe that it was a great example and it achieved great things. Thank you. Thank you. Our final speaker tonight is Gregory Cole. Hello. Uh, good evening to the mayor and the city council and everybody else. Uh, hope everybody having a good evening. I had wrote down a lot of stuff to say, but I was getting off work at 7, so I was leaving so quick. I left my notebook at home. But I do want to say something just about the city and the tragedy that happened. Uh, I think we just can change the perception of the city. A lot of things, just being knowledgeable about things that happened. Uh, that night, I'm not associated with the event. I didn't have the event, but like some of the other speakers saying, Saginaw is a beautiful community, multicultural community. And a lot of times, our city has been plagued by gun violence. But that night, you had every side of town out there. You had the uh, people, what we call it, the northeast side, but the north side. You got the east side, which is the east side, or you got the west side, all on the east side of the river, they all came together, everybody was out having a good time. So I just think, understand that one person made a bad decision and caused a chain of chaos, so it wasn't thugs out getting, didn't get killed, it was people who got injured, who was coming in from other cities, as Saginaw is, can be a tourist city, because uh, people want to come out and have a good time. So I think that's one of the things, understanding that it wasn't just people out and People actually came together, and like the high school coming, be united, it was united. So one stupid person made a bad decision. So I think that's just an important narrative for us to have out about our city so we can know, people can know what actually happened, because people are scared right now. Like he's having an event, I heard the gentleman before me spoke, he's having an event, and that's important so people can know. People, for people who they say gang members or the young people who just don't have anything to do, 
for them to come out and be out there all night and nothing really happened at all, that's, we got to start there. That's something that we can start bringing together and maybe can open up more clubs and open up more things because there's nothing to do here. I just moved back from Texas. There's millions of things to do in Texas. And just because it's a small community, we can make this a small community with a lot of things to do. You know, with the, uh, but it's a cooperative effort for the community, the people who live in the community, the police, and the city council. So we all got to work together to make Saginaw what it is, a beautiful city and a beautiful place. So next time when I come, I'm bring my economic development plan for y'all. So <laughs> y'all have a good day. Thank you. Thank you. Mayor, we are now at remarks of council. Council members, you have three minutes. We will start this evening with Councilman Flores. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Cole, for kind of pointing out the fact that what happened on June 24th was actually a positive event that was going on in our city. And it, the party had kind of been happening for a few hours before. Um, it was five people, I believe, that had done a bad thing. Um, and then other folks that were in a, a fear for their life that had done something else. It was a, a total mess. Um, I've been trying to kind of wrap my head around it for the past couple of weeks. A lot of speakers had touched on some of the things that we need to continue to do in the city, including to give other um, avenues for uh, things to do, um, surveillance cameras, Mr. Jabbar, thank you for mentioning that. I walk constantly through the city at night. I'm probably always on surveillance. Um, I was actually walking the night that Mr. Tony Boggs had passed away on uh, the eve of, or the eve of my birthday, actually. And um, just a lot going on in the city and a lot of people that are hurting. Um, I think that we could do better and hopefully moving on uh, later on into the meeting, we can talk about how we can solve some of these problems. Um, but with everything that had happened, you know, there's still some good. I think that's the best thing I love about Saginaw. There's always some great things that come out of tragedy is that people step up. They want to help. They want to do events that would um, benefit our city. They want to um, make sure our city is secured. Um, and that's something that I've seen constantly as a drumbeat since uh, everything started to kind of pop off a couple weeks ago. So I think, uh, you know, we have secured a couple cameras over in other parks. We should look into con continuing to do that. Uh, the art fair seems like a great idea. Uh, Mr. Coleman. You always have great ideas about what to help our city with. Um, everybody that came up today uh, with what we're going through we had a great uh, plan. So, you know, outside of that, everybody that had enjoyed the 4th of July celebration, that was a great event. Uh, I saw the mayor there. And um, I hope everybody has a good rest of their uh, couple weeks. And then again to um, Mr. Ryan Clemens and Pamela Whitson. You know, uh, it's a tragedy that would had happened, and we just kind of have to figure out how to help people feel safer in the city. Thank you. Next, we have Councilwoman Sylvia. Thank you so very much, Mayor. Uh, First of all, I'd like to say thank you to uh, all of the young people that spoke uh, to us tonight. Um, definitely was listening. Uh, definitely will be co uh, contacting you, Ms. Roslyn. Uh, and thank you for coming up and speaking and you all spending uh, some of your day with uh, City Council and the rest of your city. Uh, I definitely want to send out again condolences to the Woodson and the Clemens family in regards to the tragedies they experienced the last uh, June 24th. Um, also, I'd like to send a shout out to an unsung hero that night, uh, Mr. Leontay Parker, that was out there. And I've heard so many people saying boots on the ground, his were on the ground, saving 
young, young ladies, young females' lives out there that night. And he didn't stop till it was time to stop. So I definitely want to uh, recognize that young man and, and his efforts. And I've said before, and I'll say again, when you know better, you do better. Uh, I'm not going to condone certain things. I'm not going to sign on to any certain things. But I'll just say again, when you know better, do better. I also like to say, can't wait for the kickball. I don't know if I'll be kicking anything. <laughs> I'll be out there. It was an awesome, awesome event last year and a lot of different things this year. I can't wait to see that. Also, uh, CAP and New Life uh, Baptist Church will be having a block party this coming Wednesday. Everybody is invited. They said something about dominoes and spades. I don't know if they want that smoke, but I'll be there. So, uh, you know, it's just a community event uh, this Wednesday starting at 11 a.m. until 7 p.m. That's something where we can come together, youth, adults, senior citizens. Let's come together and show what we've showed over the many, many years that, indeed, Saginaw is a beautiful place. Thank you so much, and you all have a blessed rest of the day. Thank you. Next, we have Councilman Williams. Thank you, Mayor. Um, good evening, everyone, and thank you uh, to all the speakers that came forward. Uh, I don't have a lot to say, but I do definitely want to address the um, situation with their, the narrative of there is nothing to do. Um, if we're being honest, there are things to do in Saginaw, um, even for our youth. There's less to do in Saginaw than there is other places, but there's not nothing to do. Um, there are a lot of churches that have things going on, different uh, youth centers, uh, and even outside of the city. I mean, the township, there, there's definitely things to do, but if we don't change the narrative, it's always going to be there's nothing to do, and we're going to just use that as an excuse not to step up. And that's our problem as a city, is that we don't have enough people stepping up. Councilman Balls always talks about how much we need more mentors, and we do. That is a fact. We need more people to get involved in the lives of our youth. And if we don't start being accountable as adults, as parents, as civic leaders and whatnot, we're going to stay in the situation that we're currently in. We have great peaks in this city, but it almost seems like we always have, we're in the valley a lot, which it sucks, but that's only because we don't step up as a unit, and that is what needs to happen in order to change. When we have people coming up with the kickball events and things like that, and it's just, that's one person. That's one person. Imagine if we had 100 dedicated people, 100, just in this city, 100 dedicated people coming up with one idea, we would be different. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Next, we have Councilman Boss. Thank you. <coughs> um, I don't have a lot to say this evening either, but I will address the uh, fact of what happened the other day. Um, <clears throat> I got a good feeling that uh, that won't happen again in that particular area. You know, I thought about it the other day. I said, now here it is. We can maybe have a, uh, the hockey come here in town uh, no more than two blocks away from where the incident happened at. Uh, our mayor stays no more than three blocks away from there. You know, and things like that shouldn't happen. I mean, we th those kids was trying to go someplace and have a good time, and it seemed like they was in one area. Then they shoved them away from there, and they ended up in another area. You know, maybe we need to have a, a, a certain place where they can come to have a good time and maybe check them to make sure they don't have guns or something like that, because they're going to go out and they're going to gather. It's going to happen. And as citizens of the city of Saginaw and our council and our mayor and, and everybody else is in charge. We need to find something and some place where the youth can gather at, you know, do something positive. Not being out that late with all those liquor bottles and stuff like that, I don't agree with that at all. You know, uh, I was talking to one of the neighbors that stayed there and she said she's seen bottles she ain't never seen before. And I know another guy that went there and seen it the next morning, it was just, it was a terrible situation. But if we don't get a hold of this, you know, them chickens going to come home and roost in our own backyard. And I would hate for something like that to happen when we having uh, the hockey event that's happening probably next year. I don't want to see it happen anywhere. But when we bringing people to our town, 
But we don't need to have things like this happen. So, uh, like Reggie said, we do got to get involved in the youth. I want to thank the speakers for coming up with ideas of getting involved with the youth. Uh, we must admit that the uh, community centers will be getting back started soon. There's been money allocated to uh, the neighborhood house and the first war community center. And some of the churches have uh, money to get things started, too. So hopefully they can come together and coalesce and get some ideas to get our youth back to working and stuff like that and have some counseling. There's a lot of wayward kids out here that don't have no fathers at home or, or maybe one parent at home, and that parent is working and they at home a lot by themselves. And everybody know that association brings about assimilation. I don't care who you with. If you be with them long enough, you're going to start acting like them. You can have a good kid hanging around with other kids and not doing that good. And sooner or later, you're going to be doing the same thing they're doing. So hopefully, with this ARPA money that came to town, we're going to make something happen. And I'm looking forward to seeing the results maybe in two and three years what happened with our youth after all this money has been infiltrated in our community. Um, hopefully, with some of the money that we got left, Maybe we can have some employment programs for our citizens. You know, I'll I be around the city of Saginaw, and I can see how the people are, when it's time to get all work, everybody going out. You don't see people coming in that much, you know, taking the money out. We need to have people have money, make money here in the city. So we need to do something to try to employ our youth. Thank you. Next we have Councilwoman Garcia. Good evening, concerned citizens of the community. Um, just want to give a birthday shout out to my niece. Today is her 23rd birthday, Marissa Luera. Um, and also Thomas Roy for putting on a really great show for the fireworks. Um, it was <coughs> awesome. We came together as one and there was no problems, you know, so we need to be able to continue doing that. But it does take a village to raise a child, so, you know, at the main thing, it starts at home, the parenting, you know, and it's hard. Like you said, you got blended families, one family homes. Um, but we do need to do better in the city of Saginaw um, with all this going on. Um, it needs to be stopped. Um, just there is a lot of things like I get these all the time and I'm just like, yeah, wow, there's a lot. Friday Night Live starts up on Fridays. So like we've got a lot of good and free activities for families, you know, for individuals to go out. And I'm always like, yeah, when people say there's nothing to do, and I'm like, oh, my God, look at this. There's so much information in here. And on my Facebook, I'm always sharing um, community events. Everyone knows um, anything, if it's a food giveaway, whether it's home repairs, uh, if it's for my seniors. I'm constantly sharing that information because what's the point of retaining it if you're not sharing it? Because there's people out there that might utilize it. So I got a lot of people that message me and say, hey, thanks for sharing, or I was able to attend, I had a great time. And you know, it's just, it's just positive feedback out there so people can go to these events because they're not aware of them. So it's nice hearing, you know, thanks for putting it out there. You know, I really was the need of food, you know, just different stuff. So I'm always looking and, you know, I don't mind sharing any of this, especially if it's positive. Um, for the community to go out and enjoy and utilize those services that are going on. Um, there is just so much to do. And like I said, there's, I'm always constantly busy. So I try to go and participate in a lot of the community events and I have been doing a lot of volunteering and see there is a great need. Eastside Soup Kitchen has been serving like over 800 people a day and that's a ridiculous amount of people. So, you know, sometimes we take things for granted in life and there's people out there that are struggling or suffering. So, you know, just one day at a time and you just got to keep faith and God in all our prayers because at the end of the day, he's the one that's going to help us get through what the city of Saginaw is going through. So thank you. God bless and enjoy the rest of your night. Thank you. Next, we have Mayor Pro Tem Bench. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Good evening, everybody. Um, First and foremost, I'd like to express my deepest sympathies to everyone who has lost their life or been um, a victim of the violence that we've seen over the last month or at any point in our city. But um, I want to thank our public speakers <clears throat> particularly because um, so many of them have come forward with ideas and solutions um, to these problems that we're facing or that are a part of the puzzle to the solution. And uh, we can't do things, um, we can't address these issues without people like yourselves, like Ms. McNichols, Mr. Jabbar, Chucky Lawrence, uh, Ms. Collison, coming forward with their, with their ideas and their endeavors. So it's all appreciated, but 
I would echo my colleague's sentiment that there are things to do here in Saginaw. Uh, we just have to do a better job of making sure we're using our platforms to make sure that everybody knows what they are and, and that there are things to do. Um, but at the same time, our police department has been, as far as I know, dealing with these large parties after dark for some time. This wasn't the first time, it was just the first time I think that we had such an extreme tragedy come from it. And when we talk about these events, there seems to be some key elements with, with the successful events that we have during the day. Because um, we have lots of things going on. We had three Juneteenth celebrations all going on in one day, no incidents. We have Mr. Lawrence's events that go on without incident. And there's a lack of alcohol. They end at dusk. And they're organized events. They have actual organizers who care about the community, work with the city, figure out what they have to do to make sure that their event is legit. These nightly parties, regardless of how well-intended and how innocent the victims are, are not that. And we have to do a better job of working with our citizens who want to have those types of things. There are ways to rent out the park. There are ways to have security. There are ways to have these things and do these things where people don't end up harmed. Um, and I think we have to be intentional about working with the community to make sure that they know the process to have events and do things. Um, and also support people who have ideas for events and, and new things and, and, you know, like Mr. Lawrence and like Ms. Nichols' idea and things like that. But um, I think we have to be honest, you know, that our, our police department, this is not the first time that they've broken up a party of that size, maybe of that size, but I mean, they've been chasing parties and frequently people don't go home. They disperse maybe temporarily and come back or they disperse and go to another place. And that's a personal accountability issue. Um, there's nowhere in the city where it's safe to be drinking and partying after dark. It's just, I, we all know that. Um, so we, I appreciate everything that everybody had to offer here tonight, and I certainly think that uh, further discussion is warranted. Thank you. I'm fascinated with the clock, you can tell. <laughs> okay, it's my turn. My condolences do go out to the family. I've addressed that. Um, a shout out to Tom Roy. Um, we had a fabulous time. I think the, the most fun was taking the flag down because the wind got up underneath the flag and people was getting ready to go over the bridge and they kept saying, let go, let go, and I let go. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it was just a nice activity. Uh, Rick Langorian, who used to be a firefighter, uh, was honored, and the Boy Scouts, I forgot the troop number, but I know them, I know them when I see them. Um, they actually, they put a flag up, and then at dusk, we took it down, and, and he was presented that flag. Um, it's amazing at the stuff that people are doing that people just don't know. I hear us talk all the time about there's nothing for young folks to do. I beg to differ. We got jobs. When are you going to apply for the jobs? The city of Saginaw, the county, everybody's looking for people to work. There is activity for us to do. The problem is, is that, you know, they say an idle mind is a devil's workshop. Nothing will change until we change our mindset. If you speak it as though it were so, it comes into existence. I know I went down to the party, the block party. Yes, it was two blocks, three blocks from my house. You might as well say two. And they were feeding the seniors, and they were playing with the children. This was two different incidents. They weren't the same. When we talk about stuff, I think that people in the community also need to know their facts. Because when you give out misinformation, it's like the domino effect. Everybody gets hurt. There was stuff printed on Facebook. That's why I really don't do that. Because you don't, don't assume people don't have insurance. Don't assume people kids is bad. Don't assume. Take a look at your house. How does your house look? It's one thing to have affairs. It's another thing 
to see incidents like we just had. The cup is coming. The Canadians are coming. And whether you want them to or not, they're coming and they're excited. I could go on and on, but this clock I'm watching. It's one minute. Thank you, <laughs> Madam Clerk. We are now at reports from the manager. You have three minutes. <laughs> I'm joking. So I'm clock. joking. <laughs> So as a few of you did mention, I'm glad that, and I'm glad that you did, the council allocated $10 million to youth organizations. So the funding is out there right now. I believe all of the organizations have signed their contract. So if you're looking to start something new, contact those organizations. There's a lot of programming money there and they probably need people to do that work. So there's an opportunity there at, at most of the ones that were mentioned. Um, and also glad that a number of you did mention the uh, fireworks celebration because that's one of the things I checked where there did anything happen. That was a nighttime event and we didn't have any serious issues at that uh, event. But I think I also noticed another event or another organization that the mayor mentioned, the Boy Scouts. Yeah. Great organization for youth to get involved in. You know, I was a scout, so there are organizations that you can join that do service, big brothers and big sisters and so on. So there are a number of organizations out there for youth and also I was going to mention this too because the, the items that we put out of activities, there's something every weekend in Saginaw this summer uh, through the end of August, Lawn Chair Film Festival, Jazz in the Garden, Friday Night Live, Under the Stars movies and uh, Saginaw Eddie concert band, every weekend there are events. So there, there is a lot to do. Um, and this, these issues that happen after our last council meeting, we started getting text messages at Fordney Park. So uh, we did offer to go out and meet with people in the neighborhood out there. Um, we didn't have any takers, but chief, uh, fire chief and the police chief and I and uh, Jeff Klopsick did go out there and check out the park. Um, and look for placement of cameras, because I think that is one way that you can have an impact. Um, we are also going to be, at least uh, Chief Ruth and I, a similar letter I think council received from the Old Town Business Association because of it, this is happening every weekend with the groups. So we're going to be meeting with them and walking the neighborhood and seeing what ideas do you have, and I think that's a way that we can uh, work with neighborhood associations and other organizations like the Old Town Business Association to see, hey, what do you, what do you want us to do? What do you think will make your neighborhood safer? So um, have them contact my office if you know people who are interested in doing that. And not only that, I do, I always mention when I go out, we, the Saginaw Police Department also does active shooter training at businesses, churches, any organizations like that 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 want to have a uh, discussion with the police department about safety on your site, have them contact the, the manager's office or uh, Chief Ruth. A um, couple other items. We did uh, have the lieutenant governor in Saginaw on June 26th to tour two businesses. They both received the Match on Main grant. So Match on Main is a reimbursement grant program that serves to support new or expanding place-based businesses. And the DDA for the uh, past several years has been sponsoring the applications uh, which are possible because the city is a redevelopment-ready community. So the gov Lieutenant Governor toured uh, GQ's restaurant, which should be opening soon, and also Cream and Sugar. Both are in Old Town in the DDA district. So that was great to have him there. and I'm. Uh, those projects are going to be good for that area and, and bring more people down there. And then also, I did want to mention we had the presentation here, but the Neighborhood Recognition Program is up and running 2020 for 2023. <coughs> you can see the June winners in uh, the city's summer newsletter, and you can nominate anyone in your neighborhood who you think is, uh, should be considered through the city's website. It also... Um, a lot of uh, good statistics and information in the Saginaw Police Department newsletter as well. I think you all received that. And uh, with that, Madam Mayor, that concludes the management update. Any questions?
questions? Madam Clerk? No questions? No questions. Me. Okay. We are now at the consent agenda. The agenda has been available at City Hall and on the city web page and on SGTV channel 191. I need a motion leaving room for exceptions. Motion so moved. Second. It's been moved and second. Do we have any exceptions to it? Do we have any exceptions? Hearing no exceptions, call for the vote. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, nay. Madam Clerk. Mayor, you are at board, commission, and committee reports. Do we have any board report? Madam Clerk. We are now at appointment of board, commission, committee members. I need a motion to approve one and two, leaving room for exception. So move. Second. It's been moved and second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed, nay. Madam Clerk. We are at ordinance consideration and adoption. We have one tonight. It's an ordinance to amend sections 153, 505, 507, 508, 509, 520, 521, and by repealing and replacing sections 153.510, 511, 512, 513, 514, 515, 516, 517, 518, 519, as set forth in the subchapter of Title Floodplain District of Chapter 153 of the Zoning Code. I need a motion to adopt. So moved. Second. It's been moved and second. Any discussion? All those in favor, it's defied by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed, nay. Madam Clerk. You are at miscellaneous business. Do we have any motions that need to be made? Hearing none. Yeah. I'm sorry. Thank you, Mayor. I'd like the motion to um, look into drafting an ordinance that would allow our municipality to prohibit the possession of firearms on our property. Oh, hold on. Just one minute. We might already have one. I'm waiting for the attorney. See, looking at something. Mm -hmm. We're waiting for the attorney to give us an answer. So I know everybody's saying, well, what they waiting on? <laughs> I know we have an ordinance to put that prohibits the discharge of a firearm within the city limits. Just point of information, that would be separate than the discharge, just the possession. Mm -hmm. Are you talking about in here? It would be... All city locations, city-owned locations. Yep. I can take a look at that. It it will, to some extent, be regulated by state law and Correct. concealed pistol act. Correct. Just point of information. I know that there's a law um, from the Michigan legislator from 1990 that's been tried to be amended, or it's a bit outdated in terms of our ability to. Um, allow or disallow firearms in our locality. But as long as you're willing to look into that, that would be great. And then I just have a second one. Well, I'm sorry. I think we have a motion on the table. We have to... Well, it was just a motion. There was no second. So, yeah. Okay. We can review it and provide information to council. All supported. All you made the motion. All supported. Is there a second? Oh, who didn't support that motion? You didn't? I'm sorry. I thought you said no, you didn't. No, there was no oh, okay. Well, re regardless, we can review that and we'll provide the information to council. Thank you. Then also, can. Am I set? Let me go to Councilwoman Sylvia, then I'll come back, okay? Yep. Councilwoman Sylvia. Well, well my question would be, or either statement, is um, would that maybe be somewhere or does it fall with? 
not having uh, firearms at uh, voting poll places or no? I think that's a separate law. Separate? Okay. Yeah. All right. Thank you. I got one statement. Is this not an open carry? Is this not open carry here? No, so they, there's already guidelines so with the open. In place. Okay. He's asking about an ordinance, though. Huh? Yeah. He's asking about an ordinance. Okay, but we're done with that now. Okay. okay. Yeah. yeah. Councilman Flores. Thank you, Mayor. And then just to instructing city staff to look into um, endorsing the idea of gun-free zones in areas where there's large crowds gathering for big events and or by the city's riverfront. Now, did y'all hear that? Because I didn't even hear him. No, I, yeah. I didn't. I, I didn't hear him. He, he wants to. You started yeah. muffling all of a sudden. No. Okay, so just to endorse the idea of gun-free zones in specific downtown locations where there are large, large crowd gatherings for big events, uh, including the city's riverfront. So, one minute. So is this a motion that you're doing or you're asking? It was just an instruction for the staff to look into okay. the fact if we could bring this up for an ordinance or not. Okay. Does the council consent to his suggestion direction? Yeah. So that's why I'm asking, does it need to be in form of a motion? Yeah. Not if there's full consent. You can do it by consent. Okay. Yes, councilwoman. I'm just waiting on you to ask us do we consent. So go Okay. You hit your hand up. Anybody else? Here, nobody else. I need a motion to adjourn. So moved. I'll, a motion to adjourn. Four. Do we need to consent? Do we don't have to? Okay. We didn't have to consent. So it's been moved and second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed, nay. Everybody have a good next two, three weeks.